Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 2nd, 2022, recorded on 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a couple more of tropical storms to be forming in the month of July. Where would they be heading? How strong would they get? Well, let's go ahead and jump straight into all that. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. Well, first of all, today we noticed that we have Tropical Storm Bonnie. This moved over portions of Central America last night and has now made its way into the East Pacific Basin where additional strengthening is likely. And this will likely become a hurricane as it moves towards the Northwest here, but staying well away from portions of coastal Mexico. We have Tropical Storm Bonnie over here off the Carolina coastline. This became a tropical storm this morning. Uh, as pretty persistent convection and sustained tropical storm force winds were occurring. And we also have this tropical wave still pretty robust, actually, that is moving through portions of the East Caribbean right now. Additional development of the system is not likely. However, there is still a slim chance. And then more tropical waves coming off the coast here of Africa. Looking at the 2 p.m. tropical weather outlook here. So again, here's Tropical Storm Bonnie now moved into the East Pacific Basin. Here is Tropical Storm Colin and this tropical wave out here in the tropical Atlantic and eastern parts of the Caribbean. This was actually expected to dissipate a couple of days ago, but it's still moving and being persistent. And as this moves towards the northwest here, we'll have to watch for any development as this could approach here portions of the Dominican Republic within the next day or two. Looking at Bonnie, this is the 8 a.m. advisory and the final advisory for the Atlantic Basin. Tropical storm warnings have been discontinued on the Atlantic side, while tropical storm warnings remain in effect for the East Pacific side. This will be moving into the East Pacific uh, more so over the next uh, couple of hours, and the chances for any significant land impacts begin to diminish here. Real quick look here at Bonnie again. The storm has actually maintained a pretty healthy signature today. We noticed that there's still some pretty deep persistent convection around uh, and organized banding structures. This actually was trying to form an eye last night before landfall, which indicates that it was undergoing some pretty rapid strengthening but right before it made landfall along the Nicaragua and Costa Rica coastlines here. This will be moving off towards the north and west and not really expected to impact land that much. If we look at the official forecast here again, this is expected to become a hurricane sometime uh, by Tuesday and then be kind of moving off towards the northwest here. Would not surprise me if this actually becomes a hurricane sooner than that uh, as some of the models do indicate some pretty appreciable strengthening out in that region. Then if we look here at Tropical Storm Colin, this is the 8 a.m. advisory here. Not much is changing between advisories. So the advisories are certainly, at least the graphical advisories for me, are going to be a little bit less frequent. Uh, but we notice that, again, the depression or the, the storm, rather, was actually located over south, the South Carolina coast here, moving off towards the north and east. And again, will bring tropical storm conditions to portions of the coastal regions here. There's a tropical storm warning in effect for portions of coastal South and North Carolina. Maximum sustained winds right now at 40 miles per hour. If you look at the overall visible satellite today, we notice that the structure has definitely degraded uh, since this morning, but this is still nonetheless a tropical cyclone or at least being designated as such for now. Again, we have an area of low pressure. It's a bit harder to see today, but the overall circulation right now seems to kind of be over water at the moment. It partially over land and partially over water. There is deep persistent convection, but not near the center of circulation, but this is still being classified as a tropical cyclone because of its proximity to land and the fact that the diurnal maximum, which is the period of maximum convective ability, uh, will be this evening and allowing for thunderstorms to regenerate over the center and potentially allowing for tropical storm conditions to be impacting the coastline here. Either way, uh, the heavy rainfall will be the primary threat here. Rainfall amounts over the next couple of days could be as high as four inches right along the coast here from basically Charleston, South Carolina, all the way through Wilmington and carrying that up through the Outer Banks uh, with lighter rainfall amounts further to the north. And part of this, especially up to the north here, is just daily afternoon showers and thunderstorms. So mainly the gusty winds as well. Uh, we will be experiencing at least some 40 to maybe even 45 mile per hour gusts through the portions of the coastal South and North Carolina regions. 
and this will mainly come in any squally bands that manage to come through. Again, this will be moving northeast over the next day or two and be moving away from land after that. So looking at the future here, this is the GFS forecast. This is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We're looking at the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. So for context here, these deeper oranges and reds, that indicates higher cyclonic spin in the northern hemisphere and what we would want to look for in a well-organized tropical system. So today, again, we kind of notice our two players on the map. We have Colin here and Bonnie over here. I believe it is still being named Bonnie in the East Pacific as well. Um, but this is moving again. Bonnie is moving into the tropical Pacific and Bonnie is moving northeast here off the coast here. And over the next couple of days, it seems like all else will be pretty quiet. There is no expected to development really for the next while. And then some long range shenanigans here from a, a front here, it seems like, but that's pretty long range shenanigans for now. But we have a couple of things that will be interesting. So let's look at the CANSIPS forecast here. And we're gonna be looking at the precipitation anomalies for the uh, over a three month period. So this basically goes through July, August, and September. So this is kind of a three month mean here. Now, one of the important things to kind of look at here is the precipitation and the color scale here. So in the kind of the greens and teals here, this is all indicates that we have higher rainfall anomalies, meaning that there will be more kind of moisture and wetness uh, there. And then in the kind of the, the oranges and yellows here, this indicates that we have drier air and not as much precipitation, all right? So for the next couple of months, we noticed that those anomalies are generally focused out here in the Gulf of Mexico and the southwestern Atlantic. Now, this doesn't implicitly apply that we will have tropical cyclones forming there, but it does seem very interesting that these anomalies are here. And this actually goes to suggest that we could have a lot of fronts that kind of come down and tropical cyclones to develop from those fronts and, you know, even Florida, you know, the Southeast U.S. does have to monitor that. And then the secondary area here in the deep tropics in the main development region through the Caribbean, this does also indicate that we will have more amplified tropical waves that come off of Africa, moving westward with time, and the Caribbean could get in some of that activity. And then as we head through the peak of the hurricane season, this goes through October, we notice that, again, that generally shifts you know, mainly the entire deep tropics is well open, that subtropical area out here in the Gulf of Mexico and off the Carolina coast, that still is showing up and certainly drier conditions out here in the subtropical Atlantic. And if we combine that with the look here in, in the sea surface temperature anomalies here, we notice that we actually have cooler sea surface temperatures out here. And what we'll find is cooler sea surface temperatures there warmer up here in the North Atlantic and generally favorable here across the uh, the main development region and the Gulf of Mexico. This goes to suggest that we'll have an amplifying ridge of high pressure across the North Atlantic and we, we will have less stability issues down here in the deep tropics allowing for more tropical cyclones and the potential for tropical cyclones to be heading further west with that big ridge of high pressure around. And that certainly goes to suggest that we could be dealing with pretty amplified tropical systems this year heading into the Caribbean. If you look at the North American multi model ensemble forecast and kind of go to the precipitation anomalies uh, really throughout the peak here of the hurricane season, we notice that again, that Caribbean is the favored area and then the deep tropics as well seem to be favored and maybe the potential for the Lesser Antilles to be favored as well. So there definitely seems to be an upcoming period of favorability really after uh, the middle kind of part of July. It seems like the late part of July will start to see more tropical cyclones beginning to form. If you look at the GFS ensembles here, and if we look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure from the 12Z run here, we notice that generally pressures remain pretty high, but eventually pressures uh, do lower across the tropical Atlantic here by about July 18th or so in the long range. And this could definitely go to support the fact that we could be looking at enhanced uh, regions of development out in this particular area. And with the deep tropics remaining open, it certainly seems like that everything will be more than favored 
uh, for development out in these regions this year. So certainly if you're in the Caribbean, if you live in the South, you know, East U.S., and you know in the gulf coast states and anywhere that is prone to hurricanes make sure you take this time to review your hurricane preparedness plans be sure to be ready because the season looks like it will be extremely active and that's not just me saying that that's everybody saying that most trusted meteorologists are saying that and so you should certainly believe it as well not to fear not to scare but certainly something that you should be focused on as we head deeper into the season all right now, with that being said, the forecast here will be, the revised forecast will be put out on Monday. There will be no video update tomorrow, uh, but we will have a video update then on Monday afternoon, all right? So with that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow or on Monday.